the maritime ecosystem is embarking on a journey to a transformed zero emission shipping sector. The task ahead is not impossible, but it is complex. The next wave is a report from the Getting to Zero Coalition showing how developing green corridors can cut through the complexity and get the ball rolling on tra the transition to zero emission shipping. Green corridors can be thought of as special economic zones at sea, where targeted regulations, innovative collaborations and new commercial ventures are deployed along specific routes with favourable conditions for zero emission shipping. Green corridors can thus help simplify the challenges of zero emission shipping helping to bring solutions to the water faster and at a meaningful scale. Things like that, on the path to net zero emissions by 2050, we need at least 5% of total shipping to run on zero emissions fuels by 2030. The industry is mobilized to make this happen through green corridors that will enable us to go from ambition to action. However, there will still be a cost gap between fossil-based shipping and zero emission shipping, but the order of 25 to 65%. That's where governments need to come in to ensure that the cost gap is reduced and enable a wave of green corridors uh, start. In particular, governments have a key role to play in putting in place the safety measures and the handling measures required to ensure that zero emission fuels can be used in ports and on ships. They have a role to play in incentivizing and supporting investment in critical infrastructure. Uh, in particular, making low carbon, low cost hydrogen available to the shipping industry. And finally, they should help bridge the cost gap uh, through carbon pricing, contracts for different differential port fees, or, or reforms of support mechanisms. Shipping is simply not on track to meet its 2050 decarbonization goals, with emissions forecast to continue rising based on the projected adoption of ship efficiency technologies and zero carbon and carbon neutral fuels. However, a zero carbon shipping industry is possible and on an accelerated timeline, but it will require pulling out all the stops across four factors, novel forms of stakeholder collaboration, policy and regulation, pull from customers for decarbonized shipping services, and accelerated technology and fuel cost downs. No one factor can do it alone, but when executed in unison, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Green corridors offer a potential path forward in bringing together the four factors on major shipping lanes with spillovers onto other corridors. As a leading global carrier with 128 drive-out vessels, Starbuck has embedded DST performance across all aspects of its business. One of our core priorities is finding ways to reduce our climate impact. Among our many efforts on decarbonization, we are exploring practical ways to enable the use of zero emission fuels in the fleet of the future. And this is why we have joined the work of the Getting to Zero Coalition on motivating first movers. The analysis in the next wave report shows that green corridors can be a practical way to take some important first steps. For zero emission shipping to be successful, it must be an economically competitive option for companies like Starbucks. Green corridors are trading routes where policy support and collaboration in the industry could ensure that benefits to first movers outweigh the costs and the risks they are taking. We look forward to continued work and collaboration with our peers, with governments, and with other stakeholders on the development of these corridors. Thank you.